Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host Larry, and today we're back for another Photoshop tutorial talking about how to create your very own 3D maps using this 3D map generator tool I found on the internet the other day. And Photoshop along with some data that you get from a height generator program and Google Maps. And it might look a little complicated and that you actually need to know how to do some 3D rendering, but in fact you don't because most of the heavy lifting is done by this handy tool right here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to close this example. We're going to create our own version of that in a moment. And I'm going to create a new file about the size of my monitor because we're going to be taking a screenshot. So I'm going to make one that's 2560 by 1440, which is a 1440p image. And I'm going to just hit create and then I'm going to go to create or not not create, but find a real location on the Internet. And this is the website that's attached to the tool. It's height mapper. And we're going to go to height mapper and then we're going to just ignore this for a moment. Basically, what this does is it lets us see all of the topographical information about every location on Earth, including Antarctica. But what I want to do is I want to go to Google Maps and I want to find a location. You can basically use any location you want as zoomed out as you want, because all of that topographical information is contained within Height Mapper. So for our little adventure here, I'm going to use Aspen, Colorado, because I think it'd be cool because it's literally in the middle of the mountains. And then I'm going to go to the sidebar here and I'm going to hit the satellite view. I'm going to turn off all of these labels and then hide the sidebar. I'm going to hit print screen. And I'm just going to paste that into my document. This is going to be our visual information, our view of what we're going to recreate in 3D. This is what we're going to use to texture it in a second. And then I'm going to close this again. And then I'm going to go to the sidebar once more, go back to the mapping information. And then up here in your URL, I'm going to copy that URL and put that right here into this bar on height mapper and then it's just going to go exactly to my view on Google Maps in my browser so that I can take this data right here that's the size of my window and then I can save it as a PNG and then paste it on top of what I've already taken a picture of so that it lines up accurately. Now he's got to give it a second to load because my internet's a little bit on the slow side We'll just save that as a PNG, and then we'll just save this as uh, Aspen, Colorado. And then we'll just dump this into Photoshop now that it's been saved. You can call it whatever you want, really. We'll just hit enter. And then let's make sure it's properly aligned all the way up so that there's no discrepancies when we move it around to try and texturize it. And then I'm going to drag this under our other prettier layer, and I'm going to hit C to crop this bad boy. And I'm just going to move it so that we crop out all of like the symbols and stuff from the edges of the Google interface. You could hide those using your inspect element tools on your computer, but basically what I want is I want some of Aspen itself and I would also like uh, to be able to see the town and some of the mountains. And I kind of want a cooler angle at it, so I'm actually going to go to Image, Rotation. Where is that? Image, Rotation. And I'm going to make it 180 degrees, so I'm looking at it from the north. And then I'm going to hide the top layer. I'm going to select this layer that contains all of the height data. And then I'm going to create new terrain inside of this 3D mapping tool. So I'm going to click on Create New Terrain. Down here at the bottom is what we're looking at. And because this is the mountains, I need a lot of elevation. I need this to really interpret this in the extreme. And then for the angle, let's do a frontal angle. And then I'm going to go ahead and just click on that arrow. And what's going to happen now is this tool is going to look at that height information and automatically create a bunch of three-dimensional information like it's do going through a 3D rendering program so that it can recreate that at the angle that I desire using all that height information. And this particular part of the process might take a few minutes, 
It takes me around five to 10 minutes, depending on how big of an area I'm trying to recreate in 3D. So just be prepared for a little bit of a relaxing wait, grab a cup of coffee, come back and it should be done. All right, so that actually only took about a minute for this to finish of this area of uh, Aspen, Colorado. And as you can see, it, it looks really cool. You can see a lot of the topographical information. You can see all of the different like layers that got scanned by that image. But what you also might notice is that this doesn't have the same texture that I had over here when I unhide the pretty layer. And what's going on is this just creates, using the program's automatic like texturing features, a rough idea of what the 3D model is going to look like. So we have to go to texturing here in this panel and open up the texture file that controls all of this. That's its own PSD file. So we're going to go back to the, to the PSD document up here. Let me just close this other one. That contains all of that visual data for the Google Maps of Colorado, or Aspen, Colorado. I was doing Colorado Springs before this, just to see how this worked. But uh, this is Aspen, and I'm gonna go over here to that layer that contains all that visual information and duplicate the layer. And then I'm gonna duplicate it to the top layer file, which is what controls the texture. I'm just gonna click OK. And what that did is it just copied over that data over to here, so that I can layer it over top. Although that does look kind of weird. Let's try that again with more feeling. Let's actually undo that. That didn't quite copy, right? Because I believe I had this selected when I shouldn't have. So let's try that again. We'll just go to right click. Duplicate layer, because all this is supposed to do is it's just supposed to copy this on top of this other one. So it looks the same without a weird coloration. And then I'm going to click save. And that's going to save that PSD file and incorporate that back into our 3D model of Aspen, Colorado. So now that that's done, I should be able to go back over here to our bigger file. It might take you a second to load this. And here you can see a topographical map of what Aspen, Colorado looks like. And it's a really cool three-dimensional effect where you can see all the different mountains and all of the different stuff that comes down from them. It looks really neat. And that, in a nutshell, is basically how you create the first layers to this. And you can get this at a bunch of different angles, too, if you so desire. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to merge this top group so that it doesn't lag my computer while I add other details to it. And then I can, over here in this tool, I can go and press icons at the top here next to styling. And this is basically a bunch of map icons where you can add detail to your map in case you wanted to use this in, say, like a print publication or something, or label stuff, like a proper map, like this thing right here. This is a cute little label that's contained in its own PSD file, and I can make this really big and dump it in the center here of town, near the road, and I can say, Aspen, Colorado. And there, whoops. There, I have my own little map marker that I can adjust as necessary. To say this is Aspen, Colorado, and then like I can hold Alt and drag it over here and be like, this is some ski slope. And I can have all of those cool little effects right there. Then I can add like, say, put a little, what do I want to add? I can put a compass in here. This is the compass that shows north and south, and I want to rotate that all the way around because we're looking from the north, so I'll just put that like that. So that people know that they're looking from a northward direction, looking to the south of them. So that's got some different map key information. Oh, uh, what else could I do? I could put down a little car. I could just make that really small and adjust it to say, like, that's a road that people drive on with their cars going on a vacation to Aspen, Colorado. It's usually a skiing place in the winter, but there's a bunch of stuff you can do there during the summertime, like Alpine Slide is pretty cool. And then what else do we want to add to this? Because we could add all sorts of stuff that looks really swanky. I'm not really feeling it. 
Uh, if I knew better where all of the ski resorts were, I could put the ski um, run information on here. I could use this little drawing tool to add a little pathway down the side and all of that jazz. That did a bunch of stuff right there. Anyway. So basically, in a nutshell, that's how you use the 3D map generation tool to make cool maps. I thought this was a lot of fun. I didn't really have a reason to uh, add this to a publication or anything. You certainly could. That's why it's been made and designed. Uh, I just think it's a lot of fun to make little maps of places that I like in my own home state of Colorado and share them with friends. And it's, uh, it goes for about 20 bucks. It's sold on the Envato Graphics River Marketplace. Uh, relatively inexpensive, and all the rest of the tools, once you've got this, like using the mapping data is completely included, and also, you know, Google Maps is free. So go nuts, check it out for yourselves, it's a lot of fun. Until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, this has been a look at 3D Map Generator. And I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody, and have a good one.